Hi there, it's Mary Hong. I see people do this dual review of books every now and then, and I think it's a very great way to combine and compare books with similar themes together. So today, I'm going to do a dual review of the two memoirs that I read lately. I feel like they both share the similar theme, that is, after escaping from a very hard life, they still thrive. The first book I want to talk about today is In Order to Live by Yomi Park. This is a book about how Yomi and her family escaped from North Korea and went through a very difficult journey to live in South Korea. I feel it's very hard for people to talk about this book because it's so cruel. And it's also very difficult for us to imagine their life, especially if you are living in a modern or a modern-ish society. Before I read this book, I heard so-and-so rumor about life in North Korea. But I realized I can hardly imagine how it feels like when you can barely feel yourself and in the meantime, you are not allowed to do anything. This book covered from her childhood to her young adulthood. How things went up and down in her family, why they wanted to escape North Korea, and how they managed to do that. I especially like when Yomi talks about the life in North Korea, not only her and her family's experiences, but the rules in general, the differences between cities and villages, and also how your family class can affect your life. I also like when she talks about the changes in North Korea from her parents' generation to hers. I feel it's very alarming how North Korea went from everybody can have a reasonably happy life with the help from other countries after the Second World War to now people can barely live. And it's an extreme example of how propaganda can affect people's lives. The process of how they escaped was just pure heartbreaking. And I admire Yaomi's honesty to speak about all the things happened on her journey, including the sexual abuses. And I feel astonished of how people can take advantages from other people, especially when other people is lacking the power to protect themselves. But I also got shocked to how strong the willing to live Yaomi had during those times. She's such a strong young woman. I have my full respect for her. And the story about how she adopted modern life after she went to South Korea was just fascinating. Basically, she needed to abandon her old life philosophy all of a sudden and learn new way to think and new way to solve problems. I remember in the book, she talks about when she was taking classes about critical thinking and brainwashing. She was like, oh, this makes sense because of course a lot of things they taught in North Korea was false. I can see that by myself. And then she started to ask herself, if North Korea was brainwashing, how could she be sure that the things in South Korea people taught her was not brainwashing as well? And I was like, oh, this girl is just so brilliant and get to the point. And this is a great example about the critical thinking that she was learning at that time. The story after she went into the society of South Korea is very inspiring. She was so thirsty to knowledge and devoured all the books that she can find. And I found it beautiful when she realized that she needed to speak out of her story, not to get fame or anything related to that, but to help other people. So overall, you get the idea that I loved this book. And I think it's a very important book for everybody and I highly recommend it. And the second memoir of today is also about escaping, but it's not about refugees more like to escape from her own fate. And this is Once Upon a Time in the East by Guo Xiaolu. And before I dive into the reviews, let's compare the cover of this American edition to this UK ones. And can anybody tell me why they do that? In this book, Xiaolu covers her story from her childhood to adulthood, divided by different cities, including Shitang, the village she grew up before she's six, Wenling, the city her parents took her to after she's six, and Beijing to her college life, and also Europe after she became an adult. Xiaolu's story was also very heartbreaking. She was sent to other families by her parents because she was a girl, and she got returned to her original family two years later because the family they sent her to was too poor to raise a child. And she ended up to growing up with her grandmother, who can barely fit herself, not to mention her granddaughter. In this book, the part that Xiaolu talks about her family members' background story and also how they communicated, rejected, and bonded with each other was the part that I enjoyed the most. 
Each of the family member carries some trauma caused by this patriarchy society. They have a hard time to connect with each other and even with themselves. So it's very difficult for them to understand each other. Xiao Lu very honestly talk about her relationship with her parents, especially honest with her relationship with her mom. Her mom was the member that got the traditional value influenced the most. So she valued Xiao Lu's brother a lot, a lot more than Xiao Lu. Their relationship was nothing close to a daughter to mother relationship, and Xiao Lu openly said that she has nothing to connect with her mom. And I found it's a very brave thing to admit, although Xiao Lu's mom do abandon her when she was an infant. And she was also bullied by a lot of people that she know, and she was also sexual abuse by her father's colleague. So carried all the trauma with her, Xiao Lu was constantly trying to escape from her environment. In early childhood, she was trying to escape from Shi Tang, the fishing village where all the living material was limited. And in her teenagehood, she tried to escape from Wenling, where she was being emotionally and also physically abused. After she went to Beijing, she was trying to escape from China because she feel that the development of her arts was limited. She's a stubborn girl and rebellious to a point that she's not only trying to escape from the physical places, but also from Chinese culture as a whole, especially the traditional ones. She would talk about how she admires Western poetry and cannot really understand the traditional Chinese ones, and she loved Western literature and wondered why Chinese people cannot write like that. Although she rethinks this statement after she experienced the life in Europe, but as a person who loved Chinese literature and who think Chinese culture was the most beautiful things in the world, I do feel like hurt deep inside when reading like that. And also, I feel like when she talks about her own experiences, she overgeneralized it a lot. She always says things like, in China, we all do blah blah blah, or we all knew a certain thing, but that's hardly a case for me and the person and the people around me. So I feel awkward when she says, in China, we all. I do aware that there is a 16 years of generation gap between me and Xiao Lu, and also I live in the north part of China, and she was in the south part of China, so the culture difference between different parts of China was also huge. So I wished Xiao Lu can make it clear and not that overgeneralize a lot of things that she experienced. In the first book, In Order to Live, Yao Ming always says things like the things happened in her book were things happened to her when she lived in North Korea, and she doesn't know how things going in North Korea now because she escaped. However, in this book, I feel like there's an impression of everybody was the same. So I don't know if it's me being oversensitive about these things, or is this book not make it clear, but this is my biggest criticize to this book. But with that being said, I believe that Xiao Lu and her family story was accurately represent part of Chinese culture and history. And I feel like Xiao Lu is also a very inspiring woman to look up on to. And that's all for today. I hope you find my reviews helpful. Let me know if you have read those two books and how do you think about them. And in the meantime, happy reading. See you next time. Bye.